our beautiful Mercedes SL55 AMG has got a terrible clattering sound coming from the engine. And when I first heard that sound, I assumed it was something catastrophic within the engine or possibly one of the pumps like the ABC pump. But I think it's something far simpler. If you have unusual noises coming from your engine and you suspect it might be one of your pumps or your pulleys, what you can sometimes do is use a long screwdriver or the metal shaft of a socket and put that on the pump and put your ear against that and that will tell you whether the clattering is coming from, for example, the ABC pump or something else. Sometimes to ascertain where the whining sound is coming from, you're going to need to take the belts off and actually spin the pulleys to see if you can hear any screeching or there's any resistance. Now, when I did the screwdriver to the ear trick on the ABC pump, what I noticed is is down there the AC compressor which lives below the ABC pump on this car was not turning true I it was wobbling from side to side slightly and that makes me think that the bearing in the AC compressor pulley has disintegrated now in this particular car the air compressor pulley is specifically engineered to break and start making a noise when there's a problem with the bearings. This part is manufactured to let you know that you need to fix it and if you ignore that warning what will happen is that pulley will eventually come off the shaft, the belt will come, the ancillary belt will come off, it'll fly into the radiator, you will cause hundreds if not thousands of pounds of damage to the rest of the car if you ignore the warning. What going to attempt to do in this video that I don't think I've ever seen anybody else attempt to do is get that AC compressor pulley off without the use of a ramp and without removing the front end of the car. It is going to be a little bit tricky filming some of this, but um, this here is the pulley that we're going to attempt to get off. And a few important things to notice is that is just a pulley there and not a clutch. The particular Denso compressors on this car and many others, and I'll leave you the style and part number in the description below, um, have a pulley on the front and a clutch built into the actual compressor. So you're often able to just change this pulley here, which is still available, as too is the bearing which sits inside it. If, however, you were to take this along to Mercedes, they won't supply that separately. They'll charge you for the whole compressor and the pulley and no doubt several hours of labor to get it out. So I'm going to try and do this entire job without disconnecting any air conditioning lines and without disconnecting anything else from the car other than the belts. While the belts are off, I'm going to be um, possibly testing these pulleys and renewing them if need be. But our main job is to get this off. Now, in order to get this off here, there's a couple of things you need to be aware of. The first thing to be aware of is that this little nut on the front here, sometimes there'll just be a piece of metal with two flat sides that you can grab hold of, but on this particular model, it has a seven mil nut. That's not a nut that comes off. That's actually attached to the shaft of the compressor. What actually comes off is this section here, and you need a special tool to that inserts in three holes here to hold that or turn that anti-clockwise whilst holding that with the socket at the same time. That special socket looks like this and as I say these three prongs fit inside three holes. The idea is you will get a large spanner on the outside there and turn that anti-clockwise whilst at the same time holding the 7mm nut, the standard socket inside. So this is the special socket here and you can see, if I can do this without dropping this, this locks into three holes like that and there is a large circlip that you need to take off the front of this pulley first that sits on the outside and then whilst holding that 7mm socket there you're going to be turning this with a big, I think it's 19 or 22, I can't remember off the top of my head, spanner anti-clockwise and if you're very lucky this will just spin off. In order to do all of that, we're going to need to take off both the main drive belt and the ancillary belts. Now, if you're going to take those belts off anyway, you might as well change and them. And I'm going to leave you the part numbers for the belts. These are belts from Mercedes, and my advice would be for something like the belts on a car, always go along to Mercedes rather than trying to save money getting a cheaper 
brand. So we're going to start this job by taking the belts off and in order to make our life a little bit easier I'm just going to take this plastic fairing here off and I'm going to try and do it without cracking it. In theory this should just lift off, it's just held on with clips but it is possible to crack this if you don't know what you're doing. Here you can get a better look at those clips. There's nothing special about them. They just fit into these slots here and here, but having removed that, it will give you better access to the belts and pulleys. Now this belt here is just held taut by this um, tensioner here, and you just need a 17 mil socket on there. And that will hopefully, if you push it down towards the ground, will loosen this belt enough to let you get it off. Just before you take these belts off, make a careful note of where they actually go and how they thread around. That's the first one off. Once you've got the belt off, you can start testing these pulleys. First of all, spin them to see if there's any resistance or noise screeching, and then gently rocking them side to side. There's a little bit of play in this it's not excessive but you can actually buy these um, tensioners here and I'll leave a link to where you can get that from the tensioner for the ancillary belt here is this unit just here and hiding underneath the belt is a 17 mil um, bolt so we're going to use a long or deep 17 mil socket to get onto that so once we've loosened this pulley here, this belt loops around the pulley, then all the way around here, and then it goes around the AC pump, then it goes around the ABC pump, comes up along here, up past this here, around the alternator, back up round, I think that's the water pump there, and then that's the other end of the belt there. So we've now got a wrench on there and we're going to be pushing that down towards the ground to loosen that belt off. It is quite tricky to get this belt here just around that last corner. Now that that belt is loose you can see that compressor pulley rocking back and forward so the bearing inside there is obviously gone is a circlip around that pulley. You can just see the gap in the circlip there. So we're gonna get a small screwdriver, watchmaker screwdriver under that and see if we can get that circlip off. Using a watchmaker screwdriver, wedging it under there, we've managed to get that out. That is that outer circlip there. Now in theory, that should allow us to get our special um, tool on there and wind that pulley off. Would you believe the one spanner that's missing in our set is the 23 mil one? If you don't have a 23 mil open spanner, you can also use an adjustable wrench, which I don't happen to have. I'm going to try using a set of mole grips here. You can also use one of these adjust adjustable set of pliers here. There we go. You can see that's the uh, the bearing ring there. That's disintegrated. I was hoping that I'd just be able to replace the bearing, but in actual fact, this here has done exactly what it's supposed to do and sheared at these stress points here. Um, so we're gonna have fun now trying to get this um, section off here. Maybe there's just enough of that left on there to wind it off, let's see. It's not ideal, but I'm going to try bashing that set of mole grips down with a piece of wood whilst holding the um, socket with my other hand. Well, I didn't expect that to work, but I think we should now be able to screw this off. Remember, it comes off anti-clockwise. There we go. And you can see that this here is not a nut. It's just part of the compressor shaft. So this bit here has sheared off, done exactly what it's supposed to do, um, broken off to allow the rest of the car to function. So we're gonna need another one of these. I was hoping we'd just get 
away with the bearing, but that's not looking likely. And now we have to figure out how to get this off. Sometimes it's held on now with a circlip that we have to try and get a set of circlip pliers in there. The best way to get that circlip off is with a set of good quality circlip or snap ring pliers like the Knipex 170 mil um, pliers. If you try and use a cheap set of circlip pliers, you'll find that they won't go wide enough and they're not going to be strong enough to spread that circlip. But just before we try that, I'm going to try the other method of getting that off, which is to use two screwdrivers. To use screwdrivers, you ideally want something about four mil wide, something possibly like an electrician screwdriver, but they're normally made out of really cheap metal and you'll find that the ends just break off. So what I'm going to do is actually sacrifice one of our screwdrivers here and just angle grind it down to the right thickness here and also the right width. You can see it's a little bit out of focus, but you can see it's just about possible to get a screwdriver in there and lift that part of the circlip up. And now we're going to work our way around and see if we can lift the next ridge up. When you've got the compressor out of the car or you've got the car up on a ramp, it may be possible to get that snap ring or circlip off with just screwdrivers. But it's incredibly difficult when the car is, uh, when the compressor's in situ. So what you need is a good quality pair of circlip or snap ring pliers that go wide enough to actually open the snap ring. Don't make the mistake of thinking you can get away with a cheap set like this, which we've used for many other jobs and absolutely fine. But this is not going to be good enough to get that circlip or snap ring off. Even when you've got a good set of circlip pliers or snap ring pliers, you can see that the holes of that circlip there are just over or just under the actual lip. So you still need to somehow lift that circlip up to be able to get to the holes there. Well, that took a lot of doing, but eventually we managed to get that snap ring off. Now, if you've got this far, you've got that snap ring off. Sometimes this pulley will just pull straight off by wiggling it. But more likely than not, you will likely to need a puller, which is something that will push down on there and pull on these ribs at the same time. What you shouldn't do is wedge something behind this pulley and start pushing on the compressor because you'll end up knackering the compressor if you do that. This here is our ribbed puller, and this is quite a low profile one, which I'm hoping will allow me to get that pulley off. And um, these are not expensive. They're about 13 or 14 pounds. And once again, I'll leave a, a link in the description where we got this one from. Once again, it's not easy to film this, but once you've got this aligned to the center of the compressor shaft, and these slid on gripping the pulley, you just need to use the Allen key that comes with the kit to tighten these two Allen bolts up. And then when you wind this in, you should be able to pull off the um, pulley. Let's see how that goes. Now on this particular car, the gap between there and there is not enough for me to get my socket in there. So I'm just gonna use a um, 17 mil spanner to start off with. You can use a ratchet spanner if you've got one or just a normal one. And we're going to slowly wind this in and see what happens. Hopefully that is not the sound of the pulley cracking. On the some of these cars, the pulleys were metal. And on later ones, and when you buy in the aftermarket, they're invariably plastic. Unfortunately, that is indeed the sound of the pulley breaking. So this is a plastic pulley here so we're just gonna have to spin it round and try doing that in another place and hopefully eventually we'll be able to get this off remember put some um, WD-40 or plus gas or something on that shaft just to help it along okay we heard a loud snap and I'm hoping that is the pulley breaking away from this shaft whoa there we go it has taken us quite a few days to get this off let's have a closer look at it here is that pulley now that outer casing there seems to be integral to the uh, pulley because by the looks of it this bearing presses inside that 
we have actually ordered the entire pulley with the bearing already pressed in, so I don't have to spend too much time wondering how I would get that out um, and press the new one in. But if you are planning on um, pressing a new bearing in, I'll leave the bearing size below and where I got this from. It is worth mentioning, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but there is a spacer ring there, a washer spacer, so don't lose that when you take the whole pulley off. Well, you've got the belts off, it's a good idea to check all of these pulleys. Now, just check out this here. Oh my lordy. That is not good, so we're going to whip those off and see what's going on in there. I'm going to leave this video here while we wait for that pulley to arrive and in the next video we're hopefully going to be putting that pulley on which I think will be considerably easier than taking it off. We'll be putting all the belts back on, we'll also be replacing the water pump which is naked on this car and one or two of the belt tensioners which have got a slight bit of play in them. If you've got any questions regarding your car, just drop us a comment below. And if you've enjoyed the visit video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel.